Hi, and welcome to the Wellevate Life podcast. My name is Irina. And I'm Dr. Nas. And we're your hosts for the podcast. With this podcast, we'll be cutting through all the noise and bad information by having conversations with leading thinkers, cultural changers, and industry disruptors about shifting old paradigms and starting new conversations. Side by side, we'll be covering the topics that matter the most, from tried and tested ancestral practices to the best modern health hacks. We want to inspire you to elevate your mind, body, and soul to become the best version of you. Martin Zoller, good morning and welcome to Elevate Life Podcast. Good morning, Irina, and good morning, Dr. Nass. It's very nice to be here with both and you, of you and, of course, with your audience. Thank you. So um, you've been described in, you know, and been given so many titles. You're an author. You have got your own meditation CDs. You've been involved with several documentaries um, as someone who's been interviewed, as well as giving content. You have done an award-winning documentary on shamanism. Oh my goodness, do we want to dive into that? Um, and you are a psychic, you are a seer, you are an aura reader. Please, please uh, include whatever I've left behind here. And my <laughs> well, favorite I... is your human scanner. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I, I one one more title I use sometimes is psychic profiler, and. Um, it depends a lot of with whom I'm working with or who my clients is and what the focus of the of the visualization or the analysis is. So, but yes, I do all of that. What you say because my I would say the basic, let's say background uh, or the basic tool of what I'm working with is intuition, the power of intuition, the power of the sixth sense uh, of our human instinct. And as you know, uh, human instinct or our intuition can be integrated and implemented in many, many different aspects of our lives. Uh, I travel a lot with... hmm? Mm -hmm. Please go ahead. Uh, I travel a lot with my work. I lived in the Middle East for six years. I, I live in Panama. I lived in South America, in Bolivia for many, many, many years in the US. Um, I worked a lot in the uh, Central Asia as well and in Far East. And whenever I travel, I meet uh, people who do similar activities as I do. Uh, I study them. I learn from them. And this is also, for example, the reason why I did this documentary is actually two of them won the award winning about shamanism and um, ceremony, shamanistic ceremonies in the Amazon to, 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 to activate your intuitive side and your, in, your, to connect with your higher self, to, to learn about yourself and about others. And then um, when working with my clients, I focus mostly on their um, growth, on their professional growth, on their uh, personal growth, on their uh, f- f- um, intuitive growth as well. And uh, the background of my clients is, is mostly business oriented, but it's also politicians, it's individual, uh, private individuals who want to have some individual guidance for, for their lives. And uh, sometimes I'm also working with health or medical institutions such as uh, Lanzerhof in, in, at Tegelsee in Germany, or uh, last year I was in Lanzerhof, London. I was also working with a, um, a beauty and health uh, a company uh, called Amatrios. Um, I was working mm-hmm. with a pop-up uh, app project in Ibiza, um, which was also covering uh, inner and external beauty, such as different treatments and, and, and personal growth. And of course, I'm also using the power of, of meditation to help people to connect to this internal uh, power, the sixth sense, which in my opinion, meditation is one of the most important tools to learn about intuition. It's a little bit like with art. Um, Art is a very holistic and a very open science, if we want to call it like that. And then you can, once you connect it to your internal artist, uh, you can use it in many, 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 many different ways. And and, uh, with the power of intuition, the sixth sense is something similar. And uh, this is uh, why I'm covering so many different fields, with, because I'm traveling and tra- I'm trying myself to experience in this, let's say, short life we have in this physical body to learn as much as possible about all these 
an endless power of intuition at the sixth sense. So I, I would love to go way, way, way back before we dissect the spiritual anatomy and the physical anatomy and the connection and compare it. When Martin was a young boy and you could see colors around people, let's let's begin from there. <laughs> well, <clears throat> when you're a child, you 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 take the world as it is. You you see things around you. Sometimes when it's too hot, you burn your fingers, and then you know, oh, this is something I shouldn't touch. Or parents and teachers tell you what's right and what's not right, what's good and what's not good. And in that sense, when I was a boy, I saw energies or colors around people. Sometimes I even saw entities in, in, in spaces, um, a little bit similar like the boy from the movie, The Sixth Sense. I know it's an old movie, it's like from the 80s, I think, but many people still remember it because it's a very powerful movie, in my opinion, explaining quite very well how how auras and entities can be seen so for me it was a little bit similar but as being a child you learn what you see but you don't really question it i took it as something normal and i just uh, somehow played with it integrated it in a very simple and, and, and basic way later when i grew up a little bit when i went to school it somehow disappeared and um, today i think this was also for my own protection maybe because not having this um, sensitivity during school time allowed me to 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 have like a normal life let's put it that way and then after my studies after my um finishing school i i reconnected to this inner source to this to these visions again they came back in my life i was 21 at that time i left switzerland when i was 20 so i remembered that when I was a child, I saw already those kind of colors and I was 21. I wanted to learn more about it. So I did what many people do when they start to learn about their spiritual path and about their inner talents or powers. They go to India. So I stayed a couple of months in several monasteries and ashrams and learned about the intuition. I had uh, two very good and, and, and loving and powerful teachers, an American and uh, Argentinian woman. They helped me for during two days how to integrate, uh, two years, sorry, almost two years, the power of intuition in daily life in many different aspects. And that's how I became a, a student um, of, of this path. And, and after that, well, one experience and one, one um, uh, yeah, experience followed the other one. And that's how I became what I'm doing today. So do you believe that when we're children, all of us, uh, the purity in us, we are so pure, uh, there is no right or wrong. The way we think uh, there is no filter is just so clear for us. Do you believe that's why at that point you had that clarity to even see and, and connect? And when we grow up, there are so many things that we uh absorb in school we're told like you said what to do what is right and wrong people start defining things uh you know and um that manipulation of, i would say of our own self inside uh and that curiosity um you know more and more clutter starts coming in and therefore that that disconnect is there between the real pure form we're born in do, do you believe, Martin, that's what had happened and then somehow some awakening happened with you at the age of 2021, 20, which is actually the, I think, the peak of um, all the clutter, <laughs> but yet <laughs> you managed to uh, connect back to your purest sense, I guess. Well, I don't believe what you just said. I, I definitely see it like that and it's my own experience. So I, from my point of view, I can say, yes, I know it is like that. Um, when we are born as children, we, we grow up in a very natural human way without judging what's good and what's wrong. And then we just open ourselves for whatever is there. Some people on a, on a very creative, artistic way, others more like me on a very intuitive, sensitive way. And through um, by growing up through our education, we get uh, introduced in society, in religion, in, in in right and wrong and yes this is when our channels our, our perceptions are getting sometimes even cl closed or limited or, or 
at least it became very thin and then it's sometimes hard to to remember that or to connect to it and when we have the possibility to reconnect to those uh, channels to those perception i see i feel and i think it's very important to follow them because this is bringing us to what we really came to do on this planet some people on a very scientific way others on a very creative way the, the, the other ones on a very intuitive let's say spiritual way depending on what your i don't want to call it life mission but what your talent is because this in my way or from my point of view is a vocation like and in my opinion this is the difference between job professional like a job and a vocation a uh, job you do something you have to do and vocation is something you feel you want to do and then if possibly you can even do your 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 living from it and i think that's a perfect way if you find your talents if you follow your vocation and by that you have the way to to have an income and at the same time to to grow yourself and to to nurture your family and and, and to to help others to to find their own path whatever path that direction leads them to what was it around about the age of 21 was it exactly that you were at that transition where you were trying to work out what you're going to do whether it be career or vocation i mean Irina said it's kind of at the peak of the clutter. I was also wondering, you know, at that sort of age or at that point where some people would start ex experimenting with various different things. I know, you know, psychedelics or, or whatever it may be, you know, you mentioned sh shamanism and, uh, you know, ceremony in South America. There's a lot of people now doing ayahuasca outside of the traditional setting. Was there that kind of element as well? Uh Ayahuasca came much later, but from a psychological and a personal spiritual point of view, yes, this was the direction. I left Switzerland with 20. I had the idea to, to go to study in South America. That's why I went to South America. That's why I learned Spanish. But I gave myself one and a half years between uh, or a year between leaving Switzerland and going to study, not only to learn Spanish, but because I felt I need this time in between for myself. And so, yes, I, I was out of the at the social structures i was open for something completely new I, I experienced in many different ways to see what life is and what life can give me and then yes the visions came back the colors came back i i learned about meditation and i followed this path to go to india and this is how my my, my learning began yes and, and i think this is in a way this is what meditation is as well, like what I gave myself in this year, this time off is even something you can give yourself in, in five minutes to get inspired for something that helps you on your path. So Martin, um, there's so much to talk about here. First of all, do you see any colors around us? Because I'm very curious <laughs> about that right now. I'm, 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 again, I'm freaking out today, you know? Um, and if you do tell us about it, I mean, I think we should do this live assessment of Dr. Nas, forget me, you know? <laughs> I've learned my background. <laughs> um, so um, do you? Yes. <laughs> yes, of course, everybody has colors. Well, we can, if you want, if both of you want, we can have a look at both of you. I don't, yes? Is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Let's cool. do yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's start with Irina first, ladies first. Um, uh, <laughs> okay. Your, your color around your head, your color is green. Uh, interesting, your third eye is reddish. Your ears are also reddish, your shoulders are orange, your fifth chakra is green, um, your chest is orange as well. Now, talking about, uh, let's first talk about the spirit and then about two, one physical aspect as well. First of all, the, the reddish in your third eye shows me that your third eye is not as open as it could be actually. Um, you're much more intuitive than you know, and um, the reddish, no, normally reddish is a good color if you have it in your brain, because that shows that you're someone very scientific, very like uh, rational focused, and if it's in your third eye, then it shows that these rational aspects are influencing too much in your intuition, and uh, this, as in your case as well, doesn't block it, but it limits a little bit your, your intuition. So this is something, in that case, I would tell you it's important to, um, to uh, work more on your third eye because this is where I can see this is, you have some blockages. Then the red in your ears is actually not the outside, but it's inside. And um, now, okay, I'm getting to a, um, 
limit with my English vocabulary, but inside the ear, um, well, let's describe it that way. You need to be a little bit careful with like tinnitus, for example, because there is too much pressure in your inner of the ear where you have the ear hammer and um, there is too much pressure and this is actually coming from your jar. And stress, um, stress arena, stress. Uh, yes. You're going to freak me out. I'm not saying anything right now, but yeah, I want Martin to finish this first and then I'm going to share something. Yeah. So this, there is too much pressure from your jar here, which um, I would, maybe you even squeeze your teeth when you sleep or during the day. I don't know, but this mostly is the case in, in, in auras like this. So I would say from, from what I see through the pressure of the jars, there is too much pressure on the on the on the on, on your ears and this creates tension and in a long term this can even cause secondary symptoms like for example tinnitus so what you can do is work with your jar um there is there are some some techniques you can med massage yourself you can relax it even during the daytime uh, you can relax it at night because if you this this block this here and if you stress release this here it automatically also opens the tension in the middle of in the center of your ear and by that you can avoid the the secondary symptoms inside the ear wow and the green is all good <laughs> am i the surrounded by nature yes, the, which is the, what yes. i love <laughs> the green is actually creativity but creativity is not always like creativity in your case you would actually be a good teacher as well. This oh. is the green in your aura. But by teacher, I don't by teacher, I don't mean necessarily a traditional teacher like in a school or in your university, but teacher in terms of standing in front of people and teaching them. This is what you're good in. Well, I can be a guru. That is my focus. Let's see where I go with that. But Martin. A guru you're... is a teacher. A guru Absolutely. is a teacher. So, so yes. guru Irina. So I have to confess right now to all our listeners and our viewers is I have ringing in my ears since February. And the ringing in my ears is, is a combination of an electric wire and the crickets, you know, we hear in the night mm -hmm. and it's constant. And you are so right, Martin, this is amazing. Uh, my osteopath, it only works around here because he mm -hmm. says so much you grab onto. Mm -hmm. Now, with regards to my chakra, I am completely with you. Ever since I got back into a bit of the corporate life of mm -hmm. working, you know, it's all always this reality and my intuitive and what I want to be and what, you know, there's clash all the time, all the time. So, Wow, that's all I can say. You're amazing. I would have loved to uh, stand up and do the spin, but I'm wearing pajamas under this, so I don't <laughs> want to do that today. So over to Dr. Nas now. Uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, so let's see. In your case, okay. Now, in your case, we it's, it's a little bit different. I see a, a book coming up in front of your head, like boom. So... This um, this is related to work I see coming up from you, and it has to do with publica publications you will do in the future. So the the writing will become a more important um, aspect activity in your life than it has been before. And when I look at your aura, I now have this image of 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 the, of the Gulf, Gulf states, and then like jumps to other countries. So traveling will become more important abroad, but within the region as well. And I see an invitation or an opportunity from an institution. It can be a university or a, a, a clinic uh, in, the, in, in, cent in the Middle East, in the Gulf states, offering you some kind of like a seat. I don't know, like a seat, like in a sense of like teaching there or giving, giving seminars, but not only once, but frequently like following a uh, like series and um your seventh chakra right now is very strong your seventh chakra seventh chakra is the connection to your higher self and this shows me that right now in this period of your life you're you're in a very inspired and good <clears throat> moment of your life so that means it's good for you not to wait for things coming to you but you like being proactive because it's almost as if you have 
like intuitive adrenaline inside of yourself to really do things. And then uh, if, if you sit and wait, then this adrenaline just like slows down and mm -hmm. disappears. And if you use it like an engine, it really can give you, and this is for now and even for the next six, seven, eight months, you can reach many, many interesting and very good things for you with this adrenaline. And something else, from, uh, I see now some renovations happening in your, in your per private house, like, so you will have to take care of some fixings which will come up. Yeah. Dr. Yeah, yeah. Come yeah, on, yeah. that poker face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> uh, you know, interestingly, contextually, I think probably that's a hundred percent correct. As in, if I look at kind of the, the trajectory of uh, what's happening in my working life, I think it was all spot on. Um, the um, and then kind of yeah, I guess the kind of whole adrenaline scenario kind of associated with that. Uh, the home renovations is interesting. Yeah, I mean, we've done some in the last uh, year. And uh, yeah, there probably will be some uh, coming up for sure because we bought a property in the last year. So yeah, I mean, yeah, wow. So yes, there were some <laughs> things will have to be done. And this was interesting because <clears throat> it also gave an interesting idea of how aura reading works. So it's not only colors, but it's also... Um, like uh, it's not only aura it's also chakras it's colors and it's symbols or it's it's images like the book like the 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 the, the, the geographic location and mm. the, the, the 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 dots to the other countries and uh, so there are different ways to working with aura besides the colors also images and and this of course is very interesting and helpful to to people to give them guidance for their lives so Martin, um, I have to say, last last event that Dr. Nas and I did, we announced. Remember the book? It, yeah, 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 yeah. That's why I was in shock, going, "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> you know, we've been talking about this, and he's been saying, "I want to do it. I want to do it." So I said, "Let's just, you know, let, if we announce it, it's going to happen." So I pushed myself in there, and I said, "Let's just do it." Um, I have a question for you, Martin. So you've spoken to both of us. Um, they're mostly been things which are very positive, something to look forward. And I love the way you framed it, that even if there's a concern, the way you, you mentioned it is where I don't uh, freak out or panic with the situation. Looking at me and Dr. Nas, like you have with many politicians and patients and many people um, on this planet that you, you have been a part of in uh, helping them elevate uh, their own well-being and intuition, if you could say, or spirituality. When you have something concerning that you see in a person, how do you handle that? So I'm sure there are some concerns you've seen in both of us, maybe, but you're holding on to it, maybe? I'm not sure. No, I mean, of course, we are now talking, let's say, in public, not in this second, but this, yeah. this podcast will be published. So... Obviously, I, I, I paid attention of what to say and, and what, what, what to focus on and what not to focus on. Um, but yes, normally you see positives as well as difficult issues. And as long as things are positive, it's nice and, and good and smooth because, okay, you like to hear that you're on the right path, that you do the right things and that your future is bright. But more interesting, of course, are challenging things like this is that's what we saw for you about your health, because then you get insights. OK, I can do this. I can do that to prevent and to make it better. And um, in, my, in my, my experience, there are two, let's say, two main directions with, let's say, things you have to work on. There are those things you can influence because they're directly affecting you or your close environment and then with your personal work or with your team you can change it you can work on it like this you can work on it alone or with your osteopath and then you can you can you can deal with it and then there are other situations which are above your influence and cannot be changed uh, even with whatever action you're taking let's talk about serious health conditions which are so much so advanced there is no way to to, to heal it physically or if you're involved in a, in a in a economical or in a political um, process which is above your personal influence and it's just happening because it's geopolitics because it's a, a multinational company and you can't change its turn it's it's its path and in that way it's it's also about helping people to 
to manage their own way in the best um, direction possible to not get affected as much as they could be or to do the best out of it. So the idea is always to learn from it by active uh, uh, interaction or by proactive, but still like physical proactive, but still internally working emotionally, psychologically with a situation to deal as, as, as well as possible with it. I think that's very insightful, actually, because, you know, I would say that, you know, the sorts of clients that I see and the problems that come to me, I mean, it ranges everything from, you know, weight management uh, through to kind of autoimmune conditions and, you know, type 2, type 2, diabetes, whatever it may be. But I would say that the thing that I've realized more and more over time is that the whole uh, adrenal fight or flight scenario is a significant part of those cases and you're right as I, I can tell people what's going on and can give them some form of guidance but if there's a environmental factor which like is the family or the work that i have no control over um i guess it becomes a case of maybe shifting their perspective or building their resilience to to that to so they, they live with it better which is i guess where you come in with your interventions Exactly, exactly. To give them some help and support in a process they're in and they can try to do the best out of it. Yes. So Martin, you know, um, let's let's now dive into the anatomy. You have the spiritual anatomy and the physical anatomy. <laughs> Many a times um, it's the physical side that we have, for example, ailments. Does that affect our aura or our intuition? And does it cause disturbances? Because if, if we look at the world right now, unfortunately, each one of us is carrying some problem in terms of a physical ailment, you know, a challenge, a medical challenge, health problem. That, that becomes quite disturbing inside and in the mind. Does that shake your intuitive, um, call it strength, and the aura around you? Mm -hmm. You mentioned the term spiritual anatomy and physical anatomy. We don't yeah. need to explain what the physical anatomy is. I think most of your audience know it. Uh, spiritual anatomy, just to give a short idea, is, is the aura. So we have the aura, which is like our energetic body. So we have our physical body. We have our energetic body. Physical body is physical anatomy, belongs to the physical anatomy and the aura to the spiritual anatomy. Then within the aura, we have chakras. We have several uh, main chakras and side chakras. They, the chakras can be compared with the organs of the physical body. And then uh, in the aura uh, in, and in the chakras, they are connected with each other through mer meridians. And the meridians in the physical body can somehow be compared with the veins where the blood is flowing through. Mm -hmm. So if, if, if you understand that, this aspect that you have those two anatomies you can work with, you understand that there is a, a very, very powerful way to, to heal or, or to work on your healing by in, integrating those two aspects. And of course, yes, if you have problems in your physical anatomy, let's also implement psychological behavior. This, of course, affects your spiritual anatomy. So. Um, it affects your your aura if you have weaknesses in your physical body, uh, if you have psychological and emotional uh, issues and, and trauma, sick illnesses going on. It affects your aura, but it also affects your your chakras, for example. And um, if you have uh, you talked about the intuition, and of course, if you have too many worries, if you have too much stress, if you're under too much pressure, it also affects your intuition. But at that side, I would like even to distinguish a little bit more. We have um, those two anatomies, and then we have different ways of perceiving our higher self. And, and we have different, uh, different um, um, let's say, ways to focus on, on our thinking and on, our, on our, the way how we receive information and insight. We can, we can feel and sense intuitively. We can feel and sense, sense rationally. And we can feel and sense and think into it uh, uh, emotionally. So you can even think intuitively. You can not only think uh, rational from the brain, but you can also think intuitively. And the same is with the heart. So um, 
as long our two bodies, the physical and the spiritual light body, are more or less balanced and stable and, and in a good move, in a good harmony, then your intuitive, your rational and your emotional thinking and, and perceiving works well. And if, if you have physical illnesses, if you have uh, physical uh, problems, if you have uh, emotional worries, if you have uh, too much pressure and tension from outside with like whatever is going on now, then of course it affects your spiritual anatomy as well. But the same happens from the inside as well. If you have too many spiritual blockages, if you have too many, let's even say traumas and, and uh, uh, maybe even from, from past lives, for example, uh, blockages which are affecting your spiritual anatomy in a long term, in a long term, it can also affect your physical health and well-being. And, and this, for example, is very, this is one of the aspects we are working with, or I'm working with uh, at Lanzerhof as well, which is a medical spa. They are existing in, in England and in Germany and in Austria. And the, the way I'm working with them is exactly this. I try to create the balance between the spiritual and the physical, let's call it anatomy in that way, uh, to, to see where they they get along well with each other and where there might be blood blockages on one or the other side and then how to try to to resolve them and to to create some stability and in that way i'm not working alone uh, of course but the, um, some of the patients in that case they're coming to me with their with their um, um, documents from the psychologist or for, from the doctor and tell me listen martin my my bladder is not is, has problems or my liver is is, 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 is is dysfunctional what can you see and, and then i try to see from that holistic point of view what can be done to 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 to, to make it better or vice reverse I, I i see some 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 spiritual blockages some some energetic blockages in the body and i see how it affects or it can affect like in your case for example the, the some physical aspects and then i tell them listen i would recommend you to go um to your uh, doctor and work with him like this or like that so, so it's um, like a teamwork it's a teamwork we we work together with each each one is a specialist and according to the symptoms or according to the issue because it, we we now talk about medical um aspects but the same you can do in business consultations in political consultations uh, you take certain insights you have from certain um, specialists and then you compare them with other ones and you use all those informations to to create something productive and powerful to to implement it in your life in whatever aspect and to grow and to become better and to become more powerful or more strong or more rich or more loving whatever you want to do so i think at uh, lanzerhof it works so beautifully because it's all about cleansing there too their key Meyer medicine is to get it all out, reboot yourself. And I think it's such a perfect time to work because while we're doing that process, we are at a medical center like Lanzerhof or uh, some more out there. When you're cleansing, there's such a spiritual cleansing. There's such an emotional, there's, you know, you're going through so much that it's such a perfect time to work as a, a all round holistic approach to improving your health and well being. And, and Martin, Coming to um, the, the, the intuitive and the aura and the spiritual anatomy, where does the conscious and the subconscious lie for you? What is your definition uh, of what we carry in both? And it's really interesting that you touched upon the ancestral trauma, which is what the medical world is diving into deeper and has, has got call it the research and science now behind, which I'm sure you knew 20 years ago and 30 years ago, you didn't need that. Um, how, how are you adapting that uh, in the subconscious aspect of it? Well, I would say the conscious and the subconscious aspect, they are, they, they are like, let's say stored or um, within both anatomies, because you have some information in your brain, in, 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 your, in your physical brain, some of the information you, you, you forgot, out of information is quite consciousness and you remember it. And then you have in your higher self, your, let's say, spiritual anatomy brain, which to me, in my perception, is a little bit, the or is a kind of the seventh chakra. And there you also have a lot of 
information storage from those to from from uh, subconscious um, knowledge or information you have from past lives or you you had as a little little child but you don't remember so i think like in this is a good example because i wouldn't separate it only in one or the other but it's very fluid in in exchange between the two anatomies and this is this is for example how it's i would say works in in, in almost uh, all aspects of our life because you can have some you can have emotional information storage in your belly in your aura but if it's a really um, polluted and negative energy and information the emotional in, uh, um, memory in your belly it can even uh, weaken and sicken you in your digestion yeah so it's 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 going back and forward and it's fl the information the, the conscious and subconscious information is is very much linked to both anatomies so how, 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 I was just going to say, yeah, so I'm, I'm just trying to picture how a treatment plan works. So, you know, people who would go, say, to Langerhoff, it's for a period of time, say a week, two weeks. Presumably you have an initial assessment, part of which is, I guess, the aura type of sort of reading and, and imagine much more. Um, then what they would engage in in a number of treatment sessions with you during the time that they're there and, and then you give a sort of longer term plan for them to sort of go away and work with practitioners abroad is that have i, have I got it right in that respect yes no well normally normally let's say 90 percent they do one consultation with me okay. and with that information they work the time they are there or of course they take the information home and they go on working there I was working, as I said, with another pop-up um, institute, kind of similar, which is called Amatrius, where I, in Ibiza, where I did exactly the same. I was there. I was for four months, and then it was a little bit easier to to do long-term, longer-term consultations with the people because they most of them they lived in Ibiza as well. But in Lanzerhof, now to come back to that question, um, I'm there for now six or seven years, and there are several clients i i have like once a year so they they see in the in the lands in that case in the lands or hof agenda they see okay mark dollar is coming in october we saw him last year and then they plan their visit to lands or hof the time i'm there okay. and um this is one way to do it and then of course i most of my work of my consultations are online through zoom like now or mm -hmm. skype so uh, even clients from there or my other clients they do they do with me consultations once a year or once every six months or according to their necessity necessity once uh, during a period if they have some really big problems or difficulties going on within a month two or three so it really depends on on I guess it's a little bit similar like with let's say a lawyer or a doctor or a dentist uh, if you have some issues going on you might go like within a short period several mm -hmm. times and if you know that things are okay and if you don't have any pain you just go once a year for a checkup okay and i'm now going to i keep coming back to it because it's something that interests me because so many of my clients are doing it and i, I want to do it at some point myself is the whole plant-based medicine side of things and we've mentioned ayahuasca are, are these mm -hmm. the sorts of things that you believe that everyone should do at some point and can just wander in and do it or is there a specific need in, in certain individuals and is there a preparation that someone should go through? Because I'm aware that obviously if you go to the proper places in South America to do it, there is a whole sort of protocol before. And yet I am hearing of people regionally, let's say, doing the or trying to replicate these sorts of things. And I imagine the experience and outcome is very different. Well, in my opinion, um using the the help of, of psychedelic plants is very powerful for therapeutic and medical issues and we know here in europe we have for years um, psych psychiatrists and doctors worked with um, different chemical substances as well which of course are not as healthy and not as good as as natural substances but yes using this kind of um, help for uh, neurological um, treatments, psychological treatments, emotional treatments have long history in Europe and in, South, in the Amazon as well. But now, as people are very conscious about their physical health and about their well-being, they turn more and more to the physical, to the natural um, 
medicines, uh, psychedelic medicines to work with. And you mentioned ayahuasca. In my opinion, ayahuasca is one of the most, if not the powerful, most powerful, one of the most powerful medicines to use. And um, of course, I, when I did the documentaries, I did it myself. I am um, together with my girlfriend. We organize ayahuasca retreats. We don't do the ceremonies ourselves. We are no specialists. We just organize the environment and we do it in South and Central America. We work with shamans from Peru, from Colombia. We just had one of those retreats uh, three months ago. We brought the group from Europe uh, to the to Panama. We, we organized for 10 days uh, work with uh, f three to five shamans, did four ceremonies. And yes, I think it's, it, it, I see how powerful it is. I saw how powerful and helpful it was to me. And I, I, I see how powerful and helpful it is to all the people I talk with who did it when I was there, even when I was not there and did it in other retreats or did it by themselves. Yes, it's helpful. Now, I wouldn't say everybody has to do it. I think it's like in everything in life, you need to feel, uh, the, you need to feel connected to it. You need to feel the call to do it. Like just to give you a short example of my personal experience. I had my first bottle of ayahuasca in my hand in 2005 or 2003, even in Bolivia. A friend of mine, a Mexican woman gave it to me. She said, Martin, take, I don't need it anymore. And she did ceremonies. I don't want, I had this ayahuasca bottle in my hand and I gave it back to her. I said, no, it's not my thing. And my first ayahuasca ceremony, I did like in 2015. So I like from the moment I had this bottle in my hand until I did the first ceremony, like 10 to 12 years passed until I felt, okay, now the moment is here. And then I did it. So I think you really, it's important to, to feel the call and to do it because those, we can't underestimate those kind of plants and those kind of medicines. They are very powerful and we need to be stable and we need to have some certain preparation emotionally, psychologically and mentally not to, 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 to get dragged to the wrong direction. And this can happen uh, if someone is not well prepared, if someone doesn't do it in the right setting and with the right people. This is very, very important too. So I think uh, before doing that, it's very, very important to really inform Get informing itself very well about where is it, with whom is it, mm. uh, talking with people who were there, because it is very powerful. Well, don't worry, uh, Irina and I are signing up with you. Don't, it's going to happen. Absolutely. <laughs> When's the next retreat? So um, I, I think for our listeners, Martin, uh, we would like to expand a little on shamanism and what it is, because there's a lot of confusion. There's unfortunately a lot of... Um, things that are published, which scares, uh, you know, the public. So could you, in your words, describe shamanism and what they do? Well, I, shamans um, are like, I mean, first of all, shamans are like the, the very, very old and traditional doctors from the past times. And shamanism we know in in all different cultures here in, in i'm right now i'm in switzerland and here we had the druids in the past the celtics the mm -hmm. druids we had the druids in africa they have the medicine men in 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 um in south america they call them shamans in other cultures they call them healers um in certain uh, middle eastern cultures they have the mulas uh, which work with very traditional knowledge as well. I was, as I said, I was living and working for six years in the Middle East. I, I was in, uh, I lived in Beirut. I was, I spent several months in Tehran. I spent several months in working in Afghanistan, in Iran, in Iraq, in Syria, in Yemen. I was a lot in Dubai until a couple of years ago. I was in Oman. So, and of course, I also tried to learn about those kind of um, uh, knowledge in those cultures. And because certain cultural aspects, it's not so public in today's cultures in many of them, but yes, it's still being practiced. And I learned that they, in some countries they call them mulas. So yes, um, which are not, which cannot be uh, mistaken with the, with the religious ones. They are the, mm -hmm. they are the, 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 let's say the more traditional ones which are practicing in very small villages in different countries. So um, in the, the, those, let's call shamans, are like the very traditional and old uh, men and women sometimes also who, who, are, who were working with healing, uh, who, are, who are also counseling people 
and who, who were planting traditional plants, uh, not only psychedelic ones, but also for cooking, for, he for healing. Um, they helped giving birth. They were also used as oracles, like when people wanted to learn about their, their destiny, they went to the shaman and uh, like in some shamans they use in the Amazon, they use like ayahuasca and then you have other cultures in Bolivia, they used coca leaves, uh, they throw the coca leaves. And then in other cultures, they 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 read bones or they read they read uh, yeah. uh, I don't know stones whatever um, I Ching. So the, the, I would say the shamans are the old wise men who who used the the knowledge of the ancestor to to implement in their lives. And to, in today time, uh, you, we have a lot of doctors who studied medicine, and in a way they are shamans as well, even if they don't call themselves like that for understandable reasons. But they use uh, natural plants, they use holistic knowledge, they maybe even participate in ceremonies, they, they, they're very open for, for all kinds of sources of knowledge. And this is what would have been called shaman in the past. So I, I um, have been exposed, uh, and I'm sure Dr. Nas will smile there, of course I have, uh, to uh, some shamans in, in Hawaii, they are from Korea. And of course, their approach is very different to what I had read about, you know, uh, and there was always a hesitation because, like you said, you've got to be a, it's it should be the right time. Uh, also, the surroundings, you know, um, there's a lot of people who claim to be something and they're not. So I think it, you've, you've got to have a good referral to be at such retreats, such as yourself and what you and your girlfriend Martina do together. Uh, and that reference is very important. So it builds a safe environment because psychedelic medicine is medicine. It's not a party time there. So uh, it has to be a lot applied, monitored and assessed because you do have a lot of reactions. I wouldn't say side effects and that needs to be managed like any other place, be it Lanzerhof, doing cleansing at home and doing it under medical uh, environment of fasting and cleansing is very different. And I think this is what uh, the message we would like to give our listeners to that there is many, but referrals and to do your little homework before you dive into it is very important. Um, something we, we touched upon very uh, briefly is your psychic seer and remote viewing. What's that all about? You know, what is psychic, seer, and remote viewing. How could you define those three and tell us how different they are and if there is any differences? <laughs> well, they're, they're all using their high developed, skilled power of intuition to read, analyze, and study. Like a psychic is a very um, bright term for someone who works as a as a as a clairvoyant for example uh, seer is more likely someone who focuses on um uh, development like situations upcoming situations like for example uh, geopolitically or economically mm -hmm. social social development uh, societies and, and their, their 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 destiny like for example Edgar Casey or Nostradamus. Um, and then we have remote viewing. Remote viewing is a technique which was developed in the 70s and 80s in the US by the Stanford Research Center and financed by the Marine Intelligence and, Intelligence. and then it was taken over by the CIA because they were interested about how to use the power of intuition for spionage and counter-espionage. And uh, the technique which was developed there is called remote viewing. And of course, uh, at one point, uh, though the, 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 the people involved, the doctors, the scientists and the, the, the viewer, they, they independent themselves and they opened their own schools and centers. And that's how remote viewing became more knowledge, uh, known to the, to the public. But it's like it's, 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 it's like a, three different uh, words for describing something similar but not exactly the same like if you have a psychologist and a psychiatrist and a neurologist mm -hmm. they're all somehow working with a different knowledge but then they have their different specific tools so martin um, um, uh, 
did you study anything or it was all something inbuilt that you explored and strengthened further to go in this direction? Are there institutes people can become a psychic reader or an aura reader? Are there courses? And it's like with everything else. If you feel the gift and the talent in, in for something, you follow it, but you also have to learn about it. It's like if you know that you have the talent of music, you still need to learn the technical side of the instrument. You need to, to learn how to, to play it and uh, uh, you need to learn about the notes and you need to, to, to practice a lot to, to, even if it's much easier for you than for most others, you still need to sit hours and hours to, to learn the violin or the piano. And the same it's with the power of intuition. If you feel the call, if you feel that you have this gift in you, it doesn't mean that you just can be there and it's coming by itself. You need to learn about, let's say, spiritual anatomy and physical anatomy. You need to know what the chakras are at least a little bit. And then you need to know how to connect to your inner self to receive messages. You need to learn how to clean yourself, not to get polluted by too many external negative energies and so on and so on. And then you, of course, you do mistakes as well. So you try different techniques. You see in which technique you're good and in which technique you're not good. You see where your limits are and what you can until where you can go. So yes, you need to learn it like everything else in life. And for those who feel they have the call, the gift, the talent, of course, it's much easier than for others, but that's like where it's like with everything the same. And then, yes, you have different centers and institutions where uh, people can learn about this kind of activities. And I, I haven't been in Dubai for years. I think my last visit to Dubai was probably 2014 or something like that. Um, but even there, I, 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 I learned a lot about centers where they learn this, this kind of seminar. So yes. in the Middle East, you have a lot of places as well you, where you can learn all of that. Well, Martin, you know, hopefully we will be seeing you in Dubai very soon and we'd be announcing that. Um, the neuropsychoimmunology, Dr. Nas would love your input in this too. This is something now the scientific world is talking about, you know. Um, there have been cases after cases, people have cured things like cancer by, by doing that. So I guess, please correct me, both of you are experts here. Is that a form of meditation, which is now called neuropsychoimmunology? Neuropsycho well, I, I think from my perspective, scientifically, um, I mean, meditation is one of the tools you have to change your thoughts, which then influence your immunity and your, your, the resilience of your immune system. Um, yeah, I, I think an obvious example here, and it goes beyond just the immune system. I think it's the whole body's physiology. And um, we've seen it very recently in the UK, unfortunately, with the Queen. You often see elderly couples when one of them passes away, second uh partner will uh, pass away very quickly within the yes. sort of space of a year and um, we've spoken about the power of thoughts before and, and unfortunately it's still not something that's kind of grasped upon in allopathic medicine but it's certainly something that's being practiced uh, in these kind of tr traditional um, we call it alternative but original medical practices um, but yeah I'd be interested in Martin's sort of perspective on this. Yeah, Dr. Nash, I, I think I see it exactly the way you, you see it. It's, um, and it's all in, uh, interrelated with each other. So the different physical and energetic systems in our body, the different ways to perceive something, to see something, to smell something, to to learn something is all interacted with each other. So if there is a and there is if in in one if something is aspect in our neurology or immunology, it also affects the, 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 the energetic side and, and uh, vice reverse. So, and this, I think why it's very, or uh, I'm convinced why it's very important. You mentioned med meditation, Irina, because meditation can he help us to inline those different aspects and to feel where we have a disbalance and a disharmony, regardless if it's from the spiritual or the physical side and feeling sensing this we can balance it and we can create the harmony between those different aspects of our being to create well-being and to create health and by that to create strength 
I mean, I, I was, I, I was just uh, sorry, I had that arena. I was, I was listening to someone who I respect, and I guess the same sort of field as me. And, and the other day, and uh, someone asked him, you know, how do you optimize your health? And he said, well, I do whatever is going to basically charge me up. You know, we are, we are, we're batteries, and um, whether that be, you know, eating whole food, uh, exposing myself to the sun. Uh, you know, being connected to the earth, meditating, everything is geared towards improving charge and the knock-on effects of mitochondrial function. So I just thought that was a very powerful, succinct take on uh, environment, all these different environmental factors and how they affect our health, because you never hear that. You never hear in med medicine, charge, energy. These are concepts yeah. that are just never, never spoken about. Beautiful. That's true. Um Martin, you had, um, in one of your interviews, I remember reading, you said something, mind is a killer for intuition. What did you mean by that? Well, yes, actually, mind and heart. Heart can uh, kill in, uh, intuition as much as our mind, because um, to me, intuition is, is a source of, of uh, a source to connect to ourselves, to get information and to get insights. And now we know from from ver various schools and, and, and books and, and, and teachings that our mind or our thoughts are affecting our might affect our intuition negatively. Meaning, if we think too much, we block and limit our intuition. The same it's with our heart. Our heart can be a source of information, but it can it's also a, able to manipulate our intuition. I want to give, give a clear example. If I work with someone and uh, an extreme example, I have this mother sitting in front of me. She want to know about her child. And I see that this child will have serious problems and is under big threat or danger. Now, this would be my pure intuitive insight. Now, my, my thoughts might block this intuition by thinking like, mm, this child is still young, uh, this is not possible, it, it, I saw the child last week, it looked very strong, so I might be mistaken. At the same time, the heart can also uh, in, uh, um, block or limit our intuition if I get emotional about what I see, if I feel sorry for the mm -hmm. mother, if I feel sorry for the child, then this is also limiting my intuition. So. It's very important to see intuition as an independent sort of information, like as, as, as a raw diamond. And then I can later on, when I share this raw diamond with my client, I can use my, 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 my brain, my thoughts and my intuition to, to shape the diamond in the best way possible for the client. Like the brain would be like what kind of words I'm using to, to share with this model, what I just saw and my heart, how do I use my emotions to, 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 to make it this, to, to, to share this information in a not too cold and too, ex, too, too distant way. So this mother feels on one side, she knows what the reality is, but she also feels the emotional support. But receiving the information, it should be like a pure, in the, of, the, of the intuition, should be like a pure diamond without any emotional or rational influence. I think, Martin, there's so much to talk to you about. We've got to do a series of Martin with uh, on Well of Eight Live podcast because one hour is just not enough. Um, I just going to have this last quick round of a question of color myth. People say you've got to wear this color. You'll be bright. Now, my favorite color is black. I'm always in black and it lifts me and, and colors don't matter. But black has been my favorite. What is your quick views on you know, you've got to wear orange. This is how you will feel. You've got to wear white. And that says a lot about your aura, apparently. Well, it depends. Of course, colors, they have different influences psychologically and emotional. Um, but in, it can affect, but it doesn't have to. I mean, you can you can use color psychologically to uplift you, uplift you or to protect you. But um, not everybody has the same perception for colors. Like for some people, black is a very protective and a very powerful colors. Yes. Others, when they see black in a certain spiritual 
philosophy, they get scared because they think black is the color of the death and evil, and they see it as something very negative. For some people, white is the, the color of pureness, and mm -hmm. for others, white is just like too open, and they don't feel protected enough with white. So I think in terms of that, this is something either you educate yourself in, in terms of that to, to, to get insights about what colors might uh, create what in you or you do it intuitively by yourself by just like, and this is the way I do it, for example. I, in the morning when I wake up, I, I look at my clothes and I see, okay, what do I feel today connect yeah. to without analyzing thinking and without analyzing and thinking like why or why not? I just, okay, this is what I feel like comfortable with today. And then I put it on. I think with that note, I have to say, yes, today it was my stomach was upset. Black lifts me up. I wear black, you know, so <laughs> um, <Yes. laughs> Martin, we are so looking forward to your visit to Dubai very soon. Hopefully we would be able to announce that and can't thank you enough. Uh, you definitely have definitely I'm working on this now. Uh, I know <laughs> that there is something. And hopefully the buzzing will be gone next time we're speaking. And uh, thank I'll start, you so much I'll for start writing time. my book as well. I know. <laughs> I love that. Nice. Thank you. Yeah. Absolutely. Nice, and uh, Martin, we would also love to know more about later, you know, when you could share about your retreats that you would be mm -hmm. doing, be it in yeah. South America or anywhere else. And um, thank you so much for your time. Thank it you, Martin. An amazing thank you, the two of you. Yes, thank you, the two of you. It was a pleasure having you talk. I mean, it was a pleasure talking with you. Sorry, it was a pleasure talking with you. It was a pleasure meeting you. And I'm very much looking forward to see you hopefully in a couple of months in Dubai. Absolutely. Um, well, a big hug, Martin. And mwah, 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 yes. mwah, thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Yeah. Thanks, uh, thanks to nice meeting you. You too. You Have a lovely day. Thank well you. Bye-bye. Well, well. Thank you. Well, folks, that's the end of the show. And we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you for tuning in. And until next time, for more tips on how to elevate your life, you can reach out to us at wellevate.life.